Hello, welcome to today's uh, webinar. Uh, the topic today is uh, loading plates in IDEA Statica. Uh, my name is uh, Fredrik Andresen. I'm a technical support engineer at, at uh, Building Point Scandinavia. I support um, CSI products and IDEA Statica. So uh, in this uh, how-to webinar, the topic is uh, loading plates, commonly used in the Nordics as support for uh, beams. Uh, we will take a look at uh, how you can model, uh, set up the analysis, and how to interpret uh, the results. So uh, what is a loading plate? Um, well, it's commonly used for beams, uh, beam to column supports, uh, beam to wall connections, and its uh, functions is to temporary support uh, where the beam will be removed or fastened later. It can also be a permanent support where you just need to have more tolerance for uh, movements. And it makes uh, assembly of a steel structure uh, a lot easier. So uh, we'll go in and basically show you how to model a loading plate and go through the analysis, uh, interpretation of the results, and the limitations. So we will start with uh, this uh, beam to column with the slotted holes and a loading plate uh, in the bottom of the uh, beam flange. So we'll have a live demo and start with a template where we have a column uh, and a beam. We will use the default uh, steel quality and bolts and start a new project. So we will connect uh, the beam and the column with the loading plates and uh, bolts with the slot holes. So we will start with this uh, end plate and we will change the dimensions. I like to use uh, two profiles symmetrical for this one. So uh, the end plate will be just around the perimeter of the I-beam. We will change the position of the bolts, like so. And we will remove the weld on the top and the bottom. We'll also go into the plate editor. Just right click on the plate and you will find the editor. We'll place uh, slotted holes and change the length diameter ratio to uh, two, or, uh, in this case. Apply it. And here we see we have slotted holes. So now we will also place some stiffeners on the web of the column, just uh, in case. So let's uh, start on the loading plate. We will use a stiffening plate. It's a general plate that can be used for uh, all purposes. So we change the thickness. And I want this plate to uh, be on the outside of the bottom flange. So we'll define it as a doubler on the rear side of the bottom flange of the column. We'll remove the weld. And now change its uh, dimensions. And also change the position. And there we have the correct position <coughs> of this uh, loading plate. So now we have to weld the loading plate to the column. We choose a weld operation and define it to be SP1 welded to the bottom flange of uh, the column. And we want to weld it on three sides. And that is edge index one, three, and four. And it's not always easy to find which edge index uh, you need to use. 
So it's easier to change to transparent view. And there you can see edge index. Now we have weld on three sides. But we also need to uh, define a contact between the end plate and the loading plate. So we just use a weld operation and change from weld to contact. And then define the right plates, correct plates, and the correct edge index. Now we see that we have a contact between the middle of the end plate and the middle of the loading plate. So we need that to, uh, to have a correct um, analysis. So let's uh, define some loads on this connection. So we can uh, run the check. There we go. Now we have a connection in equilibrium with some loads, and we run the we hit the calculate button. All right, so we see that uh, in this case, everything is uh, okay. It has passed the code check, and we can go through the results. So we see that the mesh and uh, the form shape showing, and everything looks like uh, expected and we can check the welds for this uh, loading plate and see the utilization of all the three welds that we have defined so this is the maximum utilization and the overall utilization of the welds So there we go. That's uh, one type of connection that we can use a uh, loading plate for. Uh, we also have another type of uh, loading plate to show. Um, it's uh, a column to, uh, it's a beam to column, but without uh, bolts. So it's just a support for a beam, basically. So let's go through that and show the how we modeled it. We have a couple of other things to consider. <coughs> so in this case, we'll use a hollow section with the I beam. So we start with a template. And change the cross section to IPE. 220 in this case. We may input some loads. And in this case, we only have a, a shear force. And we uh, put in a cut to have the beam cut uh, five millimeters from the column. Then we'll put in uh, the loading plate itself. So the same as uh, the last example, we will change the thickness and the origin. This will also be a doubler connected to the rear of the web one column. Turn off the weld because we want to define uh, welds later on three of the sides. Change the dimensions. And also the position. There we go. Now we have to uh, 
uh, define a weld on three of the sides of the loading plate. So here also we can change to transparent views to uh, <coughs> to see the edge index much better. So I see that the program has chosen 13 millimeter weld. I will change it to four. So now I also have to define a contact between the bottom flange of the beam and the loading plate. So here you can see which edge index we need to use. And we can just choose the bottom flange. Now there's contact. So there is one more thing we need to consider uh, in this type of um, uh, connection. Uh, right now, the beam is uh, free. So we need to uh, put a small utility weld um, between the beam and the loading plate. So here we can use a partial uh, weld it's just for uh, um, the model to do uh, well if we don't have it there then the analysis will fail and we have uh, singularity issues so we need to have a small utility weld there we also need to change the model type to just be able to take shear force because in this case, it's basically uh, the loading plate we are checking and the welds on the loading plate. So we run the analysis and we can go through the results. We can turn on the stresses and see the mesh and the form shape. And yeah, here we can see Everything is as expected. Uh, we can check out the welds around the loading plate. And you should always also check um, the utility weld uh, and observe the results. Uh, how much is this uh, weld utilized? Uh, in this case, the weld is uh, really small and still the utilization is not critical. Uh, it has no impact on the results in any significant way. Uh, but you should always <laughs> check and verify. So the overall behavior of the model is reasonable. Uh, looks like uh, if there was no weld there. Uh, yeah, the stress and strain looks OK. And there we have a loading plate. So, um, we also have a little bonus, and that's a tip on how to organize your operations. Um, now you can sort your operations for a more organized workflow. So the uh, default mode is sequential. Now you can also sort it by operation type and by member. So we can look at it. If we have this complex uh, connection, you usually have a lot of operations. In this case, we have uh, about 70 operations. It's uh, hard to keep track on um, where each operation is. And, and there is a great tool now to uh, sort and keep track of them. So for instance here, if you want to find the operation, you have to click the part and find the correct operation, but you can now right click on operation and sort them by sequential, that's the default, or by operation type. Now you can see you have cutoff members, stiffeners, wideners, end plates, stiffening members, and so on. Everything is sorted by operation type. And you can go in and look at each operation. You can also minimize uh, each uh, operation.
operation. So you have a better, um, you can sort it better. You can also uh, sort it by member. So each member and every operation that is connected to a member will be uh, under each member. All other operations will be uh, together in the bottom. Here we can see member B3, the stiffeners, wideners, and back to um, the default sequential where everything is sorted. Well, not sorted, but it's sequential. That's it. Uh, see you next time.